go. Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Marvel Snap Zone coaching number eight. I am joined by the usuals, um, plus a guest from the Marvel Snap team, uh, Marvel Snap Zone team, because the Marvel Snap team is a different team that I don't think they're going to come and get coached because they're busy working on the game. Um, today we're going to talk about Loki, the various decks that have emerged around it, um, what is the core for Loki up until this point, and um, what kind of direction the card is, uh, is pushing towards right now. And then we'll take a little look at the popular decks uh, after the patch as well, because Loki is really strong, but there are other decks that have been uh, that have been rising. Um, and then we'll go from there, like I have a, a little domino gameplay uh, planned as well. So we will see. All right, Loki deck number one. So the important part are the three cards in the bottom, which is Iron Lad, Iron Man and Blue Marvel. Uh, this package was popularized by Freddy Babes, I believe, who had Sarah instead of Iron Man. The idea is basically that we're really good into the early game. Like, we already have a lot of cards which are really great into the early game. And the, the heavy cards, basically, if we don't need them, if the situation isn't right for them, or if Iron Lad wouldn't high roll something good, uh, we just low-key and change them. So the idea was... Considering it's cards I don't need for my deck to function, let's just try to high roll as much as possible. When I high roll, it's great. When I don't, I don't care. I'm just going to change my hand. Um, Blue Marvel looks to be the staple alongside Iron Lad, uh, mostly because this deck can fill its board really, really quick. Like when we have Quinjet and Cool Sun Collector, all that kind of stuff, like the, the board can fill quick really, really fast. Uh, so Blue Marvel has been pretty good. I think on average it's easily a 5.10, 5.11, something like that. Uh, and Iron Man is mostly because Shuri is really popular and it helps beating uh, Shuri on the Shuri lane. Uh, if it's Shuri Sauron, it's a little bit more difficult because they have Enchantress. But then if they have to play Enchantress, that usually means they are not going to play like Red Skull or Taskmaster. Like they have to skip something in order to play Enchantress. So that's deck number one. Deck number two is really close. It's almost the same cards, except the package of three cards is here in the middle row. So it's Jeff, Sentinel, and Cosmo. Here, it's a different idea. Um, the idea being that we get Sentinel added to the mix, because it works well with Collector and Loki. And then we just have two flexible cards. Cosmo is to help against opposing Lokis. It's to help against Destroy. It's to sometimes snipe Shuri. And most of the time we're going to have priority with this deck because we aim to start early. So it can also help like on turn six, you just Cosmo your Collector or your Angela and it protects you from Shang-Chi, protects you from uh, Shadow King, these kind of cards. And then Jeff is just because I guess we were looking for a cheap card that was flexible and then everybody just said, well, has to be Jeff. Um, in these two decks, we can see basically the same core. One is based on high rolling, the other one is based on helping what we're already doing. I guess if you high roll, the first one is probably better. But on average, the second one is probably going to contribute to more games. Then it depends like how much of your deck you're basing around Loki. If you think you're going to Loki every single game, you probably will go for the high roll. If you think you need a second way to win your games, it's probably good to add a, to add like a Cosmo or things like that to be able to interact with your opponent. Uh, deck number three. This is even more of the disruptive approach. So now we have Goose, Armor, and Cosmo. The idea here is just we're going to generate cards. Our hand is not going to be empty anytime soon as long as we draw into Kitty Pride, Mirage, Agent Coulson, or Nick Fury. So might as well annoy the opponent in the process. Armor is to help against destroy and similarly to Jeff whenever we don't know what two costs to put in our deck We usually put armor just in case and goose is because Apart from Nick Fury any card in our deck can be played behind it and because Loki is a minus one and with Quinjet as a minus two Goose is very very rarely very rarely going to impact us. So it's kind of a nice disruptive card in the deck and last build, which is this one, which removes the Kitty Angela package 
And this one focuses much more around the collector and Loki because we don't have that secondary way to make points. We can see the Hyrule package, which this time has Devil Dinosaur because we're playing more card generation. And we can see that um, we have Snow Guard in there, uh, which was recently buffed. And it's simply better if you have Collector and Dino into the deck compared to Maria Hill, even Sentinel or like Cable or that kind of thing. Simply because if you didn't Loki, you have a turn six where it's Devil Dino Snow Guard and you didn't lose any card in your hand. So like it's just about how much are you paying to generate how many cards. The two cost cards generate you one card. This is a one cost that generates you two cards. So even if you're not going to use any of the cards Snow Guards give you, it's still like the best value uh, in a deck with the Collector and Devil Dinosaur. So this was just to give you like pointers as the different directions Loki has been experimented with. Um, we can see basically like three big uh, directions for the deck. Direction number one is points. So some people are just going with the collector as we have on with this deck. A lot of people are going with Kitty Pride and Angela as a secondary way to build point. Um, obviously we have Loki in every single deck because Loki and the collector are insane. Uh, we can see a lot of the Iron Lad, Blue Marvel and a third card uh, for, the simple, for the simple reason that we already discussed this in previous coaching early on in a new metagame people are going to tend to look for super proactive patterns because they don't really know what they're going to face so it's difficult to include a tech card um, so you're just going to go with points and hope it goes well and because we have loki in the deck you can actually play expensive cards and if they don't work out you just change them um, and then the last thing that we have to figure out is if points are not the way, like for example, if you find decks that reliably beat you on points, I don't know yet if Shuri beats this deck on points a lot of the time, but it seems like it so far. Um, maybe if we keep playing decks without any like disruption, we could see other decks rise, which are like focused solely on points. I mean, I'm pretty sure Destroy would be good against this because we don't have any way to impair them. And then maybe this is where like the, the disruptive idea could have a way because we can just drop all our disruptive cards early on, annoy the opponent, and then we just go to lock, to, to Lucky or we just go with Nick Fury and build a different turn six. Like The thing is, because we create a lot of cards, we're adaptable towards disruptive cards and we just like anticipate our opponent is not going to be adaptable to those cards. Uh, right. Does, like, first, does anyone has a different, like, approach to the deck apart from adding, adding points, either with, like, Kitty Pride Angela, adding points with uh, Iron Lad and five costs, uh, or disruption? Like, are there other directions with the card that you've seen that have been, like, convincing and look like they're worth, like, exploring and things like this? Sorry, we couldn't hear you so, so well. At least I couldn't. Oh, uh, I think what you went over covers what I've seen for the decks. I haven't really seen many variations that are changing up the little things you talked about. Okay. I've, I've seen a Moon Girl uh, version. I think um, Marvel Snap may have featured uh, a couple days ago, but it was... Um, but isn't you know, Moon Girl what I, just replacement for Nick Fury? Yeah, that's, that's kind of the thing. Um, the, what I've seen a lot of is just mirror matches right now where everybody's stealing each other's collo uh, collectors and, uh, with Lokis and you've got um, collectors on multiple lanes. Um, that's made it a little bit hard to pin down patterns. But th these seem to be the core to me. Okay. Uh, so... If we go on to a deck builder, let's establish the core. Uh, so, obviously, the two cards at the core of the synergy are going to be Collector and Loki. 
uh, and Quinjet, I would say, like, that's that's the three cards that are, which are making the deck, like, function. Uh, I think I've seen Agent Coulson in every single deck. Um, what other core cards do we have? I think I've seen Chavez in every single Loki decks. Has anyone seen, like, decks without Chavez? Not me. Okay, so I guess... No, I... So I guess... No, I... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, no, I haven't seen anyone without Chavez either. Okay. Uh, Alright. So this is the core, for sure. And then we have, what, six, seven spots? Are there more cards? I, I would personally consider Mirage to be core because I think it's the strongest of the two costs. But it might not be. And then it's really like different packages. Uh, I guess there's a four cost, which is a, which is core. I'll, I'll put Nick Fury, but it can be Nick Fury or... Uh, it can be Nick Fury or Moon Girl, I guess. It's just, there's a card in that slot. Um... And then is where we have like I think we have two like we have two we have room for two packages and there are like three or four of them. There's Angela Kitty Pride. There is Iron Lad and three cards. And there is tech cards. And then depending on which package you go for, you add like early cards, but pretty sure Mirage would be in almost all of them. Um, and so then, yeah, it's like, a two. most of the time it's a two-card package and a three-card package. So the two-card package can be Angela Kitty Pride. That would be one. Or it can be, uh, usually, I think it's Snow Guard Sentinel. Or the card uh, generation package. So these are the two ways to help with points. And then the three card packages are uh, so this, the other one. Uh, so that was the Iron Lad, Blue Marvel. I'll just use Dino for the example, but Iron Man works. Stuff like that. Anything that Iron Lad is worth copying. Uh, so that was number two. And the last three cards package would just be tech cards, I guess. So that was like likely Cosmo Armor plus one. And I guess we could do both, but I'm not sure if it would work. Uh, does that ever work if we mix them this way? I don't think I've seen it personally. I don't think I've ever seen like the disruptive and the iron lad one mixed because then I don't think you generate enough cards. Like you need one of the two packages, either the two or the three cards one, to generate cards. So either Ormor Cosmo has to be Snowguard Sentinel or Angela Kitty Pride, or this one has to go and become like Dino Sentinel something. But I'm not sure this would generate enough cards for Loki and Collector to grow big enough. All right, so hey, who man. has an opinion on what is the best one? So who has an opinion on how we should finish it and why? I've been leaning towards the tech, the techier options of the deck. Okay, so what, what uh, would be the, the five cards? Oh, the other five cards? Yeah. Um, I have liked... Let me just pull it up. Um, I've liked Snowguard a lot. I think that's kind of one of the like best tech slash engine cards the deck can be playing right now. Um, Armor, I think that's been just another strong, cheap card. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, just... Nick Fury, Nick, uh, Nick, Nick Fury, Fury and oh, sorry, 
then it would be I've liked Cable because I've been playing a lot of near matches. Okay, so Cable over Sentinel. Uh, yeah, Cable over Sentinel. I okay. found that the one point hasn't mattered enough that picking off collectors, Lokis, Angelas, Kitties Makes sense. has been more helpful. So it's it's a tech card in this uh, in this case. Yeah. Okay. Um, am I missing one? You're missing two. Oh, you can't see my screen? Oh, I guess not. I'm still looking at the slideshow. Oh. Or the image, sorry. <sighs> sorry, guys. I'm an idiot. <laughs> thought I was sharing screen. Were you actually seeing the deck moves and stuff? Before? Um, like, in the slideshow, were they moving? Was it going from a deck to another? Yes. Okay, thank God. <laughs> um, oh, wow. okay, so this one's missing Kitty Angela. Kitty Angela, okay. And that's kind of the points package, at least in my theory, is that with the armor, I can go and do things that a six drop would be able to do with my Angela or Flector and not have to cap them at eight. Yes, makes sense. Okay, so we have the points with Kitty Pride and Angela. We have the text the text with cable and armor. And then we just have a get card, I guess, in Snowguard. Are are you including Snowguard for like the the fact that it buffs his collector and stuff like that, or is it more because the location? Like, are you actually using the powers of the card? It comes up an, at least enough times that I think it's something that I consider in my plays that sometimes I want to turn off or it, it's usually turn off locations more than ever turning them on. Okay. But it works really well with Loki collector. Um, and it also just fits really well into almost every curve. All right. Okay, but like the, the logic of the deck is similar to what we've seen already, which is a points package card and a disruptive or like a, a card generation. So one support and one point. Okay. Who else has a different way of filling up the last spots. I mean, I don't know if it's different. Um, um, I've been playing around a lot with Dino. Um, um, but I'm... I'm persuaded. I think you do need cable in there, um, especially given how nuts everything is with the mirror matches right now. Um, but yeah, um, given given the number of mirror matches, I don't know if the techs like Goose um, uh, are doing as much. Um, but that's the sort of thing that could change in a couple days. I think for the mirror match, the tech that makes the most sense is Cosmo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if you Cosmo their lucky, you just win. Mm -hmm. But that depends on you. Like, just, like, the goal here is to see how everyone has been building around Loki. Yeah. That's the point. Like, yeah. we're, we're trying to find patterns. We're not trying to find like specifically anything because there's so many lists right now. I think it comes then a lot I, to like play style, your own meta, and a lot of things like that. So right now we're just trying to find like yeah. similarities and things that we can yeah. be confident about when building the deck. Then I guess the things that I might focus on, given it, um, I wonder what a, a Shadow King or a Valkyrie could do um, to start um, squashing um, Collector or Angela, um, take away everything that you've built during the Loki. I mean, if we're looking for rival tech cards that could be it but what and then you, maybe you'd have what have you been playing yourself um so myself i've just started switching over to loki um because with the truskillian out it was dominating quite a bit i'm intrigued by the idea of something like a luke cage and shadow king to try to stop the mirror match okay 
So I guess I guess that puts us into the tech build version of it, but with different tech cards. Yes. I would point out there might be one problem, which is if your opponent plays Loki, they probably have access to it as well. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, one of, this is kind of the one exception, which is if you tech for the mirror match and they play Loki, you also tech against yourself. Hmm. Well, you could just play Cosmo and protect uh, your collector or Devil Dino, etc. This... So you can just pick the line where you want to put all your points. And that's it. Your opponent can do anything with this. Yeah, that, that's why personally I like Cosmo a lot. And sometimes you just snipe their Loki and that instant win. Uh... But yeah, if we're playing tech cards, but then if we're adding Cosmo, like if Cosmo is the last card here, when do we have time to play all this? Because like that means we have to play all these cards before we Loki. Considering turn one, we only have Quinjet. So if we have Quinjet, we play it. Turn two, we're going to play the Collector. If we don't have the Collector, I think we're playing Cable over Luke Cage. And I don't know the priority of Luke Cage or Mirage. And then turn 3, we're not going to play Shadow King because they're not built already. But the thing is, if we have Shadow King in hand, we can't really play our Loki or we're just going to give it up. So I think it creates really weird decisions mm -hmm. because this is kind of why the, the disruptive cards are cards that you can just throw at any point during the game. Because if it's cards that you want to keep until the end of the game... The problem is you also slow down your Loki and in the mirror match you want a Loki as early as possible because you just want to steal theirs and just keep playing Loki every turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. Alright, but we have established a few things. Uh, we have established that Cable is a really good card for the mirror match, which is good. We have established that Cosmo is probably one of the better tech cards in the deck. So at least we have like, this is kind of a disruptive package. The two tech cards are good for the mirror. So because we have our disruptive package, now we can look for our points. Well, we have three spots, so we can either go two points, one more disruptive, or three points. So I guess it would be Kitty Pride, Angela, and a third. Or the Aaron Lad package. Or something else. If someone has like a miraculous package that makes the deck go even like do even better than it already does. Um I mean even better is hard. Um I wonder if if we're taking the mirror match Seriously, I wonder if something like a Ronin could help. I mean, they're going to be trying to have as full a hand as they can at the end. Not at the end. Because the thing is, when you play Lo you try to have a full hand when you Loki. But once you play mm -hmm. Loki, your whole hand costs minus one, and you can empty it really easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it depends if you're seeing a rival dino then. Probably, but if they Loki... Because yeah. if you play Ronin... That means you're not playing Dino, or will you play both? Because, I mean, Ronin could be a good ability to copy with Iron Lad. We could play the Iron Lad package and have Ronin as a 5, but I'm pretty sure Dino or Iron Man is going to be just better, and they all die to the same thing. Well, actually, mm -hmm. Iron Man only dies to Enchantress. Dino and Ronin could die to Enchantress and chang mm -hmm. But we have mm -hmm. Cosmo, so we're going to say we were kind of covered. But let's, let's throw arguments. What, what are we going for? Are we going for Kitty Angela and uh, another tech card? Or are we going for uh, Iron Lad plus two abilities? You mean for the mirror match or just in general? In general. Like, um, how are we going to finish this deck? Like, what do we think is our perfect Loki right now? And why? I'm mostly interested in the why. 
Because I know how, how I would personally finish the deck. Like, my take would be Angela Kitty Pride, and then just find the third card, which probably is just a good card overall. So either Legion add even more disruption, or... Like, I'm trying to find a card that wouldn't be too much of a problem if it gets stolen, but at the same time, is kind of strong if I don't get Loki. It'll always be armor in case we face destroys. Uh, or it's a card that would help against Shuri Sauron. Because that's kind of the deck that is a problem. But to fix the Shuri Sauron problem, we have to go to the Iron Lad route. But I like the Angela Kitty Pride route better, so I guess I can't have access to that. But that's my opinion. I'm curious to hear your opinion. I, I don't know. I think like, so. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying, I think I like the more proactive package of the mm -hmm. Angela Kitty um, being still early into where the deck is and kind of a big meta shift. And I think from everything we've talked about, so what would be that the, tends to be. So what would be the package? Uh, the Angela Kitty, and I, I know we're talking this third card. Again, I'm going to go Snow Guard. I've found the plus two cards beneficial with some upside of being... I can, I can see it, because we've, we've included only cheap cards so far, so why not? Okay. Does anyone have another direction they want to give the deck? No, I like I'll it. I, I think for, I'll probably just go for Dino or maybe even Shang Chi, since we have Cosmo here. But we could maybe kill some collectors or Devil Dinos. And I'm sure that Kitty and Angela package is the best, since if our opponent uh, plays Loki, it doesn't do that much. Yeah, Kitty 4 0 is kind of good, but not too good at all. So I think it's a good coverage, Angela Kitty. And the last slot, I'll go for Dino, maybe, but of course, if our opponent just steal it, uh, we probably won't do anything with this. Uh, we don't have Shang-Chi, we don't have uh, any uh, ongoing steel. So, yeah, uh, the last slot is flexible. Okay, so for now we have a Snow Guard, we have a Dino. Armor. We could Shadow King, in theory, and we just remember to drop Cosmo in the right lane. Like, if we drop Cosmo in our Angela or Collector lane, we'll limit what happens if they steal our Shadow King. And we just don't drop our Collector in the same lane they have theirs. Uh, what could be a good card? Let's just take a look. Let's see. Is there any cost that we want to avoid? I feel like we're pretty flexible, so any card, like, any cost could do. What were in the decks previously? Uh, now you see my screen, right? So that now you're on the decks. Yep. Nice. So this was just a Sentinel deck. Uh, oh no, there was Jeff too. Uh, but I get what is our Jeff right now? Jeff is Cable. Well, I mean Sentinel is Cable, and yeah, we have Jeff basically. Uh, here it would be armor, I guess. Here it would be a 5, but we don't have Iron Lad, so we need a 5 that's like a good standalone card. Not the right. And here we have both Snow Guard and Dino, which we have discussed already. So there aren't any new ideas from like the most popular decks. Hmm. 
I guess this last slot is very open in the end. Like, there's not really a clear solution on what should be done. Then we have too many cards in hand and we just want something that's easy to throw out. Like, let's say we pick Snow Guard. Is there a case where we can't play it because we just have too many cards? I mean, if we already have too many cards in hand, we're probably doing other better things. That's true. That's the thing with this deck is you can play pretty much any card because if the situation is not right, you just toss it. <laughs> Is there a case where we play a super specific card, but we're gonna play like, I don't know, like 5% of the time, but it just, it's just an 8 cube card, the 5%, and the rest of the time we don't care because we're gonna switch it? But it also needs to be a card that if the opponent steals it in the mirror, not that good. Hmm. Could it just be Legion? Like it's... Tell us about stealing it and more about what locations there are, and sometimes it just wins. I like Legion and Cosmo together because they're very disruptive with priority, and this deck is pretty good at seizing priority a lot of the time. Uh, if we just take a look, what what's a card that could be like completely stupid, but also completely unused? Um, I don't know if I was... You know, Cosmo could block this, but maybe like a Spider Man to move around where their um, Angela or Collector are into an inconvenient location. Mm. I mean, Angela, I can see what's the inconvenient location for a Collector. Uh, if they end up, all their high points are stacked together, um, like their Dino and their Collector ends up on the same lane, um, then it makes it pretty easy to win the other two. Well then, for, if if you're talking about controlling where they go, I think Polaris does does it better than Spider Man. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the second thing is, but then you have to wait for them to play Dino to play your counter card, and that's extremely late in the game. Plus, we already said this deck is really good. It at interferes with Loki. Work. Yeah, yeah. Like you interfere with Loki, and you're not sure there's gonna be space on that lane either on your or their side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, ooh, there's a lot of new cards. Uh, we have a play Nebula. That's just we have Collector and Angela. That's just another lane they have to play onto. Hmm. Uh, for the mirror, is Iceman good? Like you just Iceman their Collector and they just lose a turn. Wonder if something like uh, I don't know, just if space is a problem, uh, a carnage to clean up some of the cheap cards we threw out just to feed Collector, um, but we want our lanes back. I've seen some people mention Venom. Hmm. Like, Venom isn't bad with Mirage. It, it's okay with, like, cards that you buffed. There's the Destroy... We do have cards that are good enough to play Bast. What about Goose? What about Goose? Yeah, Goose is amongst the cards. Like, I mean, we have literally nothing apart from Nick Fury that is not playable behind Goose. So we, we were talking about opposing Dinos and such. Well, if you play Goose, you know you just have to beat their collector because they can't play Dino there. Mm hmm. And Goose is really good against Shuri. That was the first idea behind including Goose in the deck. Is that if you Goose somewhere and you cost more, Like, if you Goose on turn 2 or 3, you have a 50-50 on their Shuri. And if you, if you cost more their Shuri, you basically win. Mm. Spider Ham would be the card if he wasn't like changed, I guess. We could still try it. I don't yeah. know what happens to leftmost, but uh to... Is there anything? We could Okoye so they get oh no, they don't get bonus points with local starting deck. We talked about space, is Mojo good? Oh it's two eight. 
I mean, if we're thinking about space, um, Dazzler could work. It doesn't require the other side to play somewhere. Yeah, but then we're leaning into more like the Iron Lad package with Blue Marvel and that kind of stuff, and that's not really the direction we took for this deck. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'll put Boost and see if we find something better. Uh, there's the thing that I like with decks like this. It might be stupid, but what about Kang? It helps managing our hand, it helps bluff snapping, and we clearly don't need the card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Kang is kind of the definition of the card, like, we have no reason to empty our deck. Like, we, have, we don't know how to finish this deck. We don't know what we want to do with the card, so let's just include a card that says, yeah, you can snap for free. And if we just play Kang whenever we draw it, that's kind of a Chavez. We just draw another card and we get another shot at Loki or something like that. But we can draw it only on turn 5. Yeah, but if Chavez. you draw it earlier in turn 5, just Loki it. I'm not sure if it's good. It's just... Like, it, it's a card I usually consider whenever my decks are done with 11 cards. I'm just like, what's a card that I can just play for fun? And mm. if I don't play it, it's fine. Oh, wait, is Storm good? I mean, Storm behind Collector is basically a one lane. And the same, like, Storm is pretty good against Shuri because... If you storm, then once again, you have a 50-50 on Cosmo. Well, actually, you don't have a 50-50 on Cosmo. Unless it's Vision, you have 100%. Because they can't access... Like, if Cosmo missed Shuri, that means they only have one lane where they can Taskmaster, and that's the lane where Cosmo is. Because they can't Taskmaster where Goose or Storm is, and they're not going to Taskmaster the lane where Shuri is, because that would just be 60 points in the same place. But I don't know what is better between Goose and Storm. I guess Goose is better for Shuri because it's cheaper and he does basically the same thing. And Storm is better against other decks. So if we play Storm, we can't play anything on that lane. But... Later on? Yeah, we can't. Yeah, we just don't have uh, a suitable card. But if we play Goose, uh, we can play any card uh, with Loki or yep. Collector, Mirage, Cable. Yeah, so it's probably Goose. Uh, okay, so it's not Storm. Uh, are there any good targets for Rogue right now? I personally don't see any. Mm. Uh, that's a card for Shuri as well we just Negasonic but I guess if we didn't play like Shang-Chi I guess Negasonic is kind of the same thing he never won 7 turns is Jin Grey good because we're playing Kitty Pride and we have very cheap cards can we force them to play somewhere like, it's kind of the same thing as Cosmo. We just... On turn 4, we just slam Jean Grey and we hope it doesn't go on Shuri's location. I mean, if we're playing a bunch of cheap cards thanks to Loki and Quinjet, Hitmonkey could make for a fun 6 turn. Yeah. Oh, but if we've played Loki, then we've lost to Hitmonkey. Yeah, yeah. That, I always the only hit that. way is we cut Chavez yeah. or play Loki on turn 3 or 4 and then hope Hitmonkey comes in. Yeah, 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 no. But yeah, that I mean, that's a good idea, but I think it takes the deck into a different direction and it adds like a layer to the... Mm. Hmm. I've thought about I mean... Bishop with Loki, but usually we don't have enough space. It might be odd, but we could try Debris and Venom since 
kind of already thought about playing Venom. I know it's a different take, but the mirror map is so space dependent. And well, if then you it can... would be debris and carnage, and carnage, because you want to eat rocks, so Venom doesn't get points from that. Uh, that makes sense, but that would probably end up changing a little bit too many things. Well, the question is, card. okay, we, for now we're trying to see if we find something better than Goose. But we need to remove two cards now. What's the second card that cut, gets cut? It would probably end up being like the Kitty Angela package. Because you'd probably want to play like the Hood to support Carnage. But that's less power. But then we just immediately... I mean, at this point... Isn't it better then to just play Hood Viper? So you don't have to go through all the trouble of playing Debris and everything, you just play Hood and play Viper? That is a much better plan. That could be a thing. Not sure if that's worth it, still. Well, we just, like, that, that's the point of the deck. Like, we're trying to make the best version we can, considering like the current metagame. Uh... We already talked about Moon Girl. If anyone sees something, let me know. Leech? That's good on turn five. I guess once we start going into the five and sixes, it's it's the Iron Lad package. All right, I guess it's Goose. Or anyone has seen a card that was more appealing than Goose? Um, I don't know. I, I like the logic of Goose a lot. Um, All right. I mean, we, we have a really good deck. We have a card for the mirror. We have another card for the mirror. And past the mirror... The most popular and probably most dangerous deck is Shuri. Goose takes care of it. Cosmo can help. Even if we go past Shuri, it's what? Patriot Surfer? Cosmo is good against Patriot Surfer. Goose isn't so bad against Patriot Surfer because if you lend it, like, they're going to play Forge and then they're going to play Brood. And if they don't Brood the lane of Goose, or if we play Goose on turn three for some reason, like we go Angela on two, Goose, Kitty Pride on three. We literally tell them this is where you have to play Absorbing Man. Because they can't play it on the Goose lane. So we know where they're going to play it. If we have priority, we just slam Cosmo on that lane and we cancel it. So I guess that's, that's probably your deck. That's probably, I think, the, the best we can do with this. Was it close to one of the decks? I think it's one card off this one, except Cable replaced Armor. Or am I missing something? Um, I think it's, yeah, it's just, we removed armor, which was the tech card for destroy. And instead we got cable, which is a tech card for the mirror match. And the card that actually contributes to the deck because there's synergy with collector. It's that's right. Okay. So we, we ended up with a mix of, I guess, no, a mix of this one, which was cheap cards for a, a hand we could manage, and this one, which was the disruptive approach. Hey, who wants to take it for a spin? Who wants to actually see if the deck is good? Go for it, Silverman. All right. Um, let me just, uh, build want, this real... Do you want the code? Do you want me to save it and I give you the code, or do you just want to copy it? Oh, sure. Why don't you, uh, throw me the code? Okay. I'm looking at a lot of different versions of Loki right now. My eyes are crossing. <laughs> we're gonna call it Good Loki, because we're extremely arrogant people. <laughs> I like it. Well, we gotta believe okay. in our ideas. It took four people, we put all our brains together, we have a reasoning behind each card, we can explain all the packages. If this is not a good deck, like, we have failed as deck builders. 
<laughs> and now let's go into a conquest game, tag destroy and get de demolished because we removed armor from this deck. Well, Sounds I, good. I guess we still have Cosmo for destroy. Like really? What's the deck that's truly annoying us in the current meta game? Like amongst like let's say top five. What's top five? Mirror match, Shuri, Patriot, Destroy, and then number five is what? To me it would be like Inchinot or maybe Move Legion. What is it that we're like, oh my god, if we face this, it's a big problem? Destroy is probably the biggest, because they can play around Goose very easily, except for Null. And, they have, and we only have Cosmo. But the trick against Destroy is just we keep Mirage for the end game and we just steal their Deadpool. And that's really fun. Mm -hmm. Shuri, we already discussed it. We have Goose, Cosmo. Mirror, we discussed it. We have Cable, Cosmo. Move Legion? Do we care yeah. about Move Legion? Or do we just, like, beat them because? We're going to develop a lot of points early, and we're going to spread them, so I don't know. Yeah, I think it's um, just a points battle, and I'm not really afraid of it. This? What's... What's this? Did we consider Beast at any point? Um, I tried it day one, and it really, really clogs your hand. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Like, my personal experience with Beast, and I love Beast, uh, is it's immensely overkill. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, for real, what do you want to Beast? Apart from Kitty Pride, what are you Beasting in this deck? Um, cable, Mirage, yeah. Cable, yeah. You don't want to beast um, Quinjet. Makes no sense. You could right. beast Angela, but usually the only reason you want to beast Angela is because you beast Angela and Kitty Pride, and you can usually just replay Kitty Pride, and that's big enough. Beasting mm -hmm. Goose makes no sense. I think beasting Mirage is really really slow. Although you could try it. You never beast Collector, because that's the reason why you beast. Can't beast Cosmo. And then if you had Cool Sun or Nick Fury, you probably don't have space in hand to beast anyway. And you can't beast Loki, because if you Loki, you lose beast. So we have like, like four cards, Kitty, Angela, Cable, Mirage, or the only candidates. Sent you the code on, um, on DM, by the way, Silverman. Ah, perfect, thanks. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, okay, so let me go over to share the screen. All right. Okay. Are you okay to play ladder? Do you want to play conquest? I guess early oh. in the season, I like to play ladder because I like to see more diversity. But if you want to preserve your ranks, up to you. Nah, I mean, you can always rebuild anything you lose, and experimenting is fun. Um, so I'm, I'm very open. Um, let me just share the screen real quick. Okay. Alrighty, I think you should have it. I'm on it. If people watch okay. the screen, they're going to see you. Excellent. All right, let's, let do me, this. let's move on over. So we called this one Good Loki. It's Loki, All right. it's good. Alright. I like it. it so, ladder or conquest? Ladder. Alrighty. First day of the season. No, actually, it's the second day. Uh, but I think ladder is at its best early in the season because you see a lot of diversity, which is better for testing ideas rather than conquest. Um, and second thing is also, like, we build the deck for a reason. And if we get into a conquest game against some exotic deck, we're just gonna spend 15 minutes and all the <laughs> choices we made did not make any sense. Makes sense to me. All right. So, here we go. <laughs> the title is so perfect for experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, we're playing against a real player, like Infinity Border and everything. Nice. If the game ever starts. 
Hey, if we're winning by countout, that's a good deck. I mean... We scared them. Sorry. Ah. Ah, darn. All right. All right. Well, at least we're going to be able turn. to test the disruptive cards. That's right. I mean, Goose on Mojo World is interesting against a lot of decks. Do you, let's see. Okay. Well, there we go. As usual. Death Strike could be... No, that's not going to happen fast enough. Um, so, Goose on Mojo, you still think? No, Collector. Okay, I was going to say. Um, collector makes sense, probably not Mojo. I would play it on the unrevealed location because we don't have any way of reaching those. I like it. Similar logic than Morbius in... Okay. Huh. So, first thing, we probably know it's from the Tishkelion, but get into the habit of when there's random generation, just click on it, make sure, know if it's from their deck or not. Okay. Um, so, we don't have any info yeah. about this one. Yeah. Okay. How does Goose well, work behind Invisible Woman? They can't play behind it. Like, they can't play the big guys behind it, right? I I actually don't know. I don't think they could. No. Um and so depending on what they'd get, it you know, the Cosmo could also work. Well the thing is I think we we're gonna have to play either Goose or Cosmo on the collector lane to protect it. Mm-hmm. But maybe we hold that choice and just play Rock Slide for now. Yeah, I like that. Um ruin their else. draw. Maybe on Mojo World? If you're committed to playing four cards there, yes. I think we can. So keep right, go spider. Once again, click on that go spider. Make sure we get as much information as we can. All right. Okay. Created by the chess All right. Oh. All right. So. Well, so. Oh, go ahead. No, we have to decide. When are we playing Loki? I was, I was thinking um, Goose now and Mirage on Mojo World. Okay. And then Loki next but, turn? I don't know. Um, Nick is still a good option, too. Next turn. Well, when are you going to play Loki on turn 6? I mean, I was thinking um, 5 to replace... Um, yeah, if you're going to play it on 5, yeah. Nick Fury is not an option. Because next turn is 5. Yeah, turns. yeah. I see. Right, yeah. Um... Yeah, um, so I was... Do you think Loki now, then? We don't know what he's playing. If it was a mirror match, I would say Loki now, but we don't know. I think I would like to put down a goose, and I want to hold on to that. Okay. Actually, Mirage is not bad for Mojo. And we're finally going to know what they play. Oh, it's a mirror match. We should have Loki. Right. They didn't get Collector. All right. Oh my God, that was so good to not Loki. <laughs> All right, million dollar question. Yeah. We snap. Oh well, sure. Yeah. I mean, we said that big, like the 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 central spinal cord of uh, spinal. I don't like the spinal thing that we have in the back was Quinjet yeah. Collector and Loki. We got all three. I like it. Um, I think Loki makes sense on Mojo World. I'm thinking Quinjet, I don't know, here or on Xandar. The question is, do you think Collector can win on its own? No. Okay. I see. Give him help. I love it. All right, let's see how it goes. Oh, that's a cheap hand. Oh, my God. All right. That's pleasing. So, All right, well. Do you know how to play this hand? Because now Collector's uh, going to win a lane on his own. Yeah, I think I definitely going to want to have Loki on the left again. Um, yes, but last. I th yeah, I think um, Nick Fury in the middle, perhaps? I mean, if you, you said Loki is going to go on the left, 
Yeah. And we said no. Still last, there. last, last, last. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just seeing the remaining yeah. cost. But and yeah. And we said yeah. collector can probably win on his own. So there's only one location left. Yeah. All right. I like it. So then let's see. Um, Mirage is good. Um, I'd say this and like this. Uh, I think you want a Kitty Pride, right? Because if you have Kitty Pride in your hand, it's plus one to collector. If you play Kitty Pride, it's plus three. And also, you're gonna Would... generate, you're gonna generate five cards. All right. Um, I mean, Kitty Pride's not gonna come back to us this turn. It's last, so no. But Kitty Pride itself is three power. Aha! Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. If you have it in your hand and Loki shuffles it, collector gains plus one because you got a new card. If you play it, you get plus three because Kitty Pride is in there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Really interested what they put behind the invisible one. It's not big cards, but if it's a mirror match, they didn't have big cards anyway. Well, they could have played a four cost because they have Quinjet and Coulson. So. Oh, they play Shang-Chi. Right? Well, I guess we win then. Maximus. Okay. Iron Lad. Oh my god, maybe we lose. I mean, depends if it's a... Nope, okay. It could have been a blue marble. Yeah, that was going to be the thing. Um, well. Okay. That was not bad. So they were playing the more, I guess, the, the, the bigger deck. So did we annoy them? No. Not at all. But we didn't play neither of the cards that were built for the mirror match, which were Cable, mm -hmm. and, Cable and Cosmo. So I guess... That's right. Boost. Well, we didn't know it was a mirror match. But if we knew it was a mirror match, we should have played Cosmo in that lane instead of Boost. Mm, yeah, yeah. I see that. All right. Let's, should we let's play try it again? Yeah, let's play a few. And then we'll have the break, and then we'll talk about counters. I love it. Also, if others want to cheap in during the game, feel free. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Oh, well, okay. That's all right. That's... He's I mean, so everyone dynamic. is playing Loki. That's nice. Well, so oh, now no. they got our counters for the mirror. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, say again? Snap, maybe? Oh, you want to snap already? Oh, with the collector? Well, they might have gotten yours. If we had ours and, in hand and we had two collectors, I would have said yes, but... And they might have our counter cards. Yeah, I think our deck is supposed to be better in the mirror, and they have our deck. And they can have Quinjet. I think Quinjet is stronger than Kitty Pride. Because now all the cards they draw is minus one. Hmm. This is going to be a fun, tricky one. So, uh, collector question is same logic as the last. I get like on the yeah on the right. Alrighty. Is that ours or is that theirs? Um. Is it your variant? I think that is my variant. Um, but I thought I had a different design around it. Um, Sarah tells us it's probably the Iron Lad deck. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so Kamartage is potentially fun with the collector down. Um, Kamartage is really good, and you want to benefit it before they draw Cosmo. So I think I want to try to steal what they've got, or our own cards. Um, so that's Mirage there. And then I think... Should I play Kitty or Agent 13? Um, Kitty alone, when you don't have Angela. Like, yeah. basically, she's a two right now. Because she gains one, and Collector gives, gets plus one as well. So both cards are a two. The question is, mm -hmm. do you want another card in hand? Do you want space? It's more like that. I think I, think I want options right now. Um, and I also want to keep Kamartage a bit open. So oh. I played Agent in the middle. That's good. Oh, okay. Well, that's I'm good. not mad about that. That's good and bad. Because that means they have our Loki. Oh, they have a Quinjet too? Oh. 
Now, if I had Dino, um, all these Lokis in Kamartage would be fun, but... Yes. Um... I think you Loki. Okay. You, you think what, sir? I would Loki Kamartage. Mm -hmm. Your collector basically um, becomes unbeatable. Is it worth throwing down Kitty as well? Would you rather have a 1-4 or would you rather have another card? I see it. I okay, so just leave like it here. One four. Hmm. Is it worth? Maybe um, you want to maximize yeah. your chances of actually getting their low key again. So. That's the Keep way. the uh, kitty pride. Yeah, just you have one more shot at stealing low key again or taking another card. Because like the dream okay. is, you get collector and low key again, and you do the exact same thing. Like you, you fit collector. On two asteroid, and then you play Loki on the right, and so n pff, they have double Quinjet, so that's annoying because mm -hmm. what Nick Fury just generated is going to be a three cost. No, it's mm -hmm. going to be a four cost. Oh, it's okay actually; it's four cost. They can't play two on last turn. Oh. Okay. All right. We well, gotta ask the that's... big question. You mean do we snap? I mean, there's a 22 collector, there's a 20 power collector, and we got another one in hand. And we know we don't have a Shang in our deck. Um, if they're holding on to one, they've been pretty cagey. So... Well, we've seen a lot of cards from their deck, and there wasn't yeah. a Shang. So let's see, I want to put collector on the left at this point, I think. Put, put it where the Cosmo is, so there's no risk. Ah, smart, smart, okay. Um... Let's see, what do we want to get? Um, I mean, a Quinjet probably doesn't hurt. Yes. Um, so you could. Play, let's see. Uh, I think I would play it in the middle. You don't need points in the middle, and that's gonna stop. I was thinking. Over. I was thinking of blue marble in the middle, but I would play Agent Cool right this turn. Like, okay, so Agent on the right. And Quinjet middle. You could and play then... Agent Thirteen on the right too, because you have a collector that's. Completely stupid, anyway. Yeah, I think oh, that's right. Actually, we didn't need Agent 13. Like, Cool Sun alone is going to kill our hand. But... Hmm. Oh, Fury. Oh, we can play Fury Zero. With one card. <laughs> Wait, did he steal nothing? Can you click on our deck? Um, yeah. Oh, or their hand was full? Let's see here. What's the cost um, of our cards? So we have a blue marble that costs three and one that costs four. That's right. Am I seeing this? That right? looks right. Yeah. Okay. Wait. How likely it is Dracula discards something crazy? Like if we go blue marble Dracula, we have a red skull and a Chavez in hand. That good. Claw is what a four. Yeah. Because we, we can't win left, right? There's no way we win left, so we just want to support our two existing lanes. The question is... Actually, we could win left. If Dracula discards Red Skull, we win left. Hmm. So I think As opposed to just something... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, it's just Dracula, Blue Marble. Because then you still get the support on the other lanes, which are the two you expect to win. But if they manage okay. to come back, you have a 1 in 5 to steal the left. I like it. Okay, I think they took out their or 1 in 5 in there, but how are they going to win here? Ooh, Thanos? And Loki? Oh. What? What? Or the cost of all this? Uh... If we played huh. Claw, if we played Claw, we would have won with the tie. Yeah. Um. What could we have done differently? Because the right was a win for sure. Yeah. Um. Let's see. We have not I played Quinjet and let Cool Sun go to the middle. Oh yeah, that's. We would have got That's interesting, yeah. a little bit more points. We would have got like three more points. We would have been 
much better. Yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe maybe blocking the middle, but I mean, look, I oh, wouldn't I have expected also, Thanos here. So yeah, and also Agent Thirteen, like the. I think the biggest error was playing Agent 13 last turn, which is completely on me. Because mm. we filled our hand with Coulson, so the Collector in the middle didn't get any buffs from Agent 13 being played. While if you played it this turn, we would have gotten uh, the card, and we would have gotten the points. So, that is completely uh, Well, um... Yeah, it looks like, I mean, that middle lane is so darn close. Um, we could have done a lot of things, but this play still seemed very strong to me at the time, so... I think the play was yeah. correct. It's not the last turn that we messed up. It's the, the turn before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh? Let's try it yeah, out of three. But, but they know that we have blue marvel in our hand, probably, since they didn't get it. And yeah, and they're playing it, and we I play Loki on a full hand, so they, they must assume we have Blue Marvel. Yeah, and they just stacked uh, just enough power to the middle lane to win it. Yep. Yeah. But there, there are things we could have done so that they could have not come back in it. Yeah. Well, anyway, want to do two best 2 yeah. f 3 I like it. All right. No, I think they just played it very well. I think we didn't play it well enough. More, <laughs> more than them. Well, there goes my generous spirit. Uh, let's see. Oh, the, the rocks are going to be interesting here. Um, so, Quinjet. Um, with an ongoing like this, I don't want to play it blind because if it ends up being something that blocks if you um, turn, ongoing. Like, if you had a turn two... We could have played like right and just fit two cards in case it's an unplayable. But because you don't mm -hmm. even have a follow up, yeah, you can just take the safe one. And... Makes sense. And just hope we don't get punished. It's only one location that's really a problem with. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, wait. Of course. Did we just snap because we have Quinchet on the board. I mean. I mean, Bishop on the right is scary. Bishop on turn 2 That's means true. it's probably going to be like a 3-9. Wait, no, we still have like 10 spots? Yeah, it's a 3-11. This, this feels great to me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's see it. I want to see what they This have. is exciting. This is the time where Cosmo is going to counter something. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. also have Legion. Like, with Quinjet, we could Legion the middle and have fun. No guard. Okay, that's not that good. It doubles the phone. On the snow card. Okay. Oh, Kitty Pride is so good with Bishop. Mm hmm. Let's see. Um, I want to keep the right lane open in case we want to protect our Bishop with a Cosmo or something like that. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't like the cost distribution here. Um, too early to. Colson, I think it, our hand will be full. Um, Kitty, right now. Hmm. I think we have to slam Cosmo. On. Yeah, Cosmo on the right. I think I would slam it or... middle, have priority. Ah, okay. Because oh, I see is, that. Yeah, our hand is okayish. Ah, okay. okay. That was a consideration to slam it left. I... Definitely did not expect Rogue to come in. No, that was, that was a nice counter. But we have Scrolls, so we can just take it right back now. <laughs> yep. Just fit Scroll, I guess, behind Cosmo. Yeah. yeah I'm a little like worried we're, we're not... We're playing Cosmo to protect Collector and Angela, but that's true. It also protects Quinjet in a way. Mm -hmm. Now they have Loki. Okay. Well... Um, I don't know. Uh, if we have enough points, legioning the right to just choke them off could be helpful, but we're not quite there yet. Well, they have a full hand, a handful of our deck, so do they really need to draw anything? Mm. 
Hmm. Isn't it like a Nick Fury Kitty Pride play? And our hand will be full, so Kitty wouldn't come back. But you could go Nick Fury Ghost into like a five cost and Kitty Pride next. Turn. Okay. Well, six um, cost five. I think Nick Fury left, and then I don't know. Ghost may as well middle. Yeah, there's not really a a spot for Ghost, I guess. Okay. Oh, Doom! I'll take it. Doom is Doom is handy. Orca isn't bad either. Ah, uh, they're just gonna go nuts. Yeah. Hmm. This is a. Uh, this is tricky. It's they're gonna fill up the board anyway, so the legion won't help now. Um, nah, we don't have priority. Well, I mean, we yeah, have this, so. yeah, yeah. Um, Question is, do we even stay in this game? Because if you want to win, just... I guess the only play is Doom Kitty or Orca Kitty, but I don't think you have enough if you go that route. Well, let's see. So, what did they steal from us? Um, oh, you don't know. If we, yeah, if we orca the middle, can we beat their collector? Um, well, if you're gonna do that, might as well orca left, so you don't have to beat a collector. True. True. The question is, and then. On the right? Hope they don't develop. No, they're going to. They have enough cheap cards. Yeah, I think we have to retreat, are in right? My hand right now. Ah, good. Um, oh, they're gonna, yeah, they're, they're fine. Fill the board, hundred percent. Yeah. Well, good for them. Um, but the yeah, I think I was. Go ahead, my bad. I, I think I was too aggressive on that scroll, just stealing back the Quinjet. Um, we lost momentum on that. I think I should have um, just focused on point development and not worried about the Quinjet. That's think, my sense. I, I think our error in this game was we didn't know where to place Cosmo, so we just kind of random threw it. And we placed it in the middle to have priority because we were ahead on all three lanes. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't account for the maybe something's going to happen. And we, I think it was when we discussed the deck, we said Cosmo was to protect Collector and Angela. And we actually never mentioned that it was a really good protection to Quinjet. Ah, uh, yeah, good point. Like, it is a protection mm -hmm. to Quinjet as well. And I guess, like, if we don't have Collector or Angela, Quinjet is the next priority card, so we should have protected Quinjet with it. And I think that would have won us the game on the spot. Yeah, and it's something I didn't consider, because I was still trying to protect Bishop at the time. Um, so I, I missed the Quinjet completely. So, yeah. Well, we, we, we played three mirrors. One one mm -hmm. lost two, but the two we lost were easily winnable. Which is a, a slight difference. Like we changed one play in each game, like one positioning and one timing, and we're good. Yeah, it it really seems like with the mirror, um, having the exact tech card isn't as important as piloting these very crazy shifting Loki hands. Um, well, the tech cards make it, like, how do we say, make it harder to pilot. But yes, if you pilot mm -hmm. perfectly, the deck is insane. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, usually we have a break about 20 minutes ago from now, but we kind of skipped <laughs> that. Does anyone feel like they need a break, or do we just keep going? I'm going to get some sleep. Okay. Have a good night. Have some sleep. Yeah, you too. Thanks all. Oh, bye th bye. Thanks for thank joining you. us. Yeah, thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, as for the other two, anyone wants a break or are we good? I'm fine to power through. I'm flexible. All right, then I guess we're going to start talking about counters. So let's go back to the deck. So, as we see, everyone is playing Loki, we tried stuff, we <laughs> played into a couple of mirrors, 
we didn't play well enough to win them, but if we found a deck that could beat Loki, we would be king of the world. <laughs> so, there actually are a lot of cards which, on paper, look good to Loki. So, here are the ones we know about. So we know... If they, if they take cards from High Evolutionary, they're not going to get the Evolved one. They're going to get the Vanilla ones. So that's really good. Um, something else is Hella. Because oh, do we, do we know that? That they, they don't get the Evolved ones? 100%. Oh, okay. Well, great. Uh, then they can take our Ella, but if they have not discarded anything, Hella is completely useless. I'm not sure if that's good, but it's the same principle with Thanos. They cannot get Infinity Stones. Because he wasn't in the deck at the start of the game. Um, two, 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 two. Ah. Oh, so I see. So Loki's not copying your starting hand. It's what you have at the beginning of the game. So the it's Thanos taking... and the High Evolution don't activate. I see. Yes. It's an effect. Ah. Like, it's at the start of the game. So Loki picks before that effect ever happens. Oh! Is this not bad? Like, at least against Thanos. Because if you Loki, this you is, won't get any stone. This is why I said I'm not sure if it's good or bad for Thanos. Okay. Uh, Cerebro. Because if we play uh, Cerebro, like, you know, two or three, there's a high chance that their collector is just going to mess up Cerebro and the card is completely useless for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, 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 two. Lockjaw. Because Lockjaw plays with what's in the deck. And if they change their hand, they don't change their deck. So likely they're going to get crap from Lockjaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, wave. Because Loki says minus one, Wave says no. <laughs> uh, what else? I actually made a list. I'm going to go... Look at it. Uh, if you have other ideas, go for it. I think... So I'm still stuck on the Shadow King Valkyrie kind of idea. One of those. Uh, Shadow King... Yeah, but that's against Elector. We're trying to beat Loki for now. Like, we're focusing on your effect is going to be bad. I see, so just beating Loki, okay. We said wave, so let's include Sandman. Mm -hmm. They usually work in similar fashions. Well, we said the deck mm -hmm. has a space problem, didn't we? Can this bad boy help? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're struggling with three locations. How are they doing with one? And the deck has a lot of like bad cards. Like there's a lot of two power, three power. If you can Galactus that lane, they're <laughs> likely left with, like, two spots. That's true. And they're going to play their point generation cards, either Angela or Collector, early. So that gives us an idea of what's the free lane. Um... I mean, hmm. I played, like, a Sandman ramp deck where Galactus was one of the tech options. And so maybe going a deck that can slot it in as a tool more than the full game plan. Sorry, can you say that again? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I've played Galactus as like a tech option um, a couple of times in like Sandman ramp decks and stuff like that. And so, just thinking of these cards and the combinations, that might be an idea. Uh, yeah. You it's... know, sure. Spectrum? Spectrum could be a fun one, because unless they... I mean, they're probably not building a lot of ongoing cards themselves, so Spectrum becomes kind of useless to them. Yeah, but it's just one card that is useless. What's the deck, then? Because Spectrum, the only deck that plays Spectrum is a Thanos and going deck. I agree Spectrum itself is going to be bad, but... 
But we, if you're they, benefiting they, they, from Spectrum, you have ongoings that they're stealing it too, so actually it doesn't work out, yeah. Uh, no. Well, okay, so these were the first ones. Now we have to talk about the obvious counter to Loki, and the ones that I feel nobody's talking about and I have no idea why. But when it comes to switching decks and uh, playing with a bad deck, we have a card that literally says, oh, please, take my starting deck, it's the worst in the game. <laughs> like... If you play Mr. Negative, they're playing with your old deck. You're playing with your new one. You're never losing that battle. Oh! Because that's the starting deck. They get the pricey cards. Oh. So I, I guess in the same way like the old-fashioned Lockjaws, um, where you're just trying to pull a whole bunch of um, sixes out of it, same thing. Um, oh, could something like a MODOK be bad for them? I mean, well, they're just not gonna sure. You just fair, fair, but we could also run like Black Bolt or Silver Samurai and try to remove like to remove cards from their hand so that it gets less cards with Loki. Oh, Samurai is interesting, but okay, let, let's work on these. So, I think. There are three ways we can look at it. Either we try to fit as many cards as we can into the same deck, and we can fit Wave and Sandman into the same deck. We can fit Lockjaw, High Evo into the same deck. We could fit Lockjaw and Wave into the same deck. Uh, I don't know if we can fit anything with Ella. And we can play a Mr. Negative deck. And Mr. Negative deck actually benefits from being able to play Valkyrie, because it's lower power than cost, so that's also solved the Collector or Angela problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, which direction do we want to go to? But to me, the two decks that are really good would be Lockjaw and Negative. But the thing is, Lockjaw is not playing a lot of Evolved card. Like, they would just get Wasp and Hulk from it. But the thing is, they get a lot of expensive cards, which they can't really play. What about the um, Wave High Evo deck? Evolve Doom Wave? Yeah, we, we could also build that. But that's a deck that already exists and everything, so I guess other people are going to do the testing for us. But yeah, it's a deck that works against the uh, Loki Collector. The only problem from the the feedback that I got is if they Loki on turn 3, then they can out-tempo you by the time you play Wave. Like, it beats Loki on 5, it doesn't necessarily beat Loki on 3. I'm, I'm honestly laughing a little bit at the idea of a uh, Mr. Negative deck. That, that just seems really sneaky. Alright, let's start with that. So... Which one do we play? The negative Surfer or the negative Knoll, Knoll, Zola, that kind of stuff? Well, if, they, if we're playing the Surfer version, then they might steal enough of our threes and Surfer to still eke out some points, plus Loki's a three, um, Coulson's a three. Um, Let's go with the Knoll, Zola. Yeah. And this is pretty funny because Null is going to help against Destroy. Oh, yeah, yeah. This, this feels really sneaky. I like this. Uh, Jane Foster, I guess. Mm hmm. Magic? They're struggling with space. With space. Let's tell them hey, you need another turn. Uh, Iron Man. Mystique? What are the last cards in this deck? Usually I like um, to include like Wong, Black mm -hmm. Panther, stuff like that. But it could also be Wong, Wolves Bay. Do we sometimes do Tribunal in this deck? Why? What would be the reason to do Tribunal in this deck? Oh, I was just thinking of a backup strategy in case we don't get negative, then we could Iron Man, um, you know, try to build points that way. 
that feels extremely complicated too because we also have to fit onslaught then that's true that's true and then i don't think i think if we don't get negative we just get out <laughs> where is that negative? well then if we want things um if we want to try to get negative or get out i mean would a, a crystal or well we have something magic, like that work? we could get crystal uh what's in this deck usually can't find the uh, can't find it on the deck tracker for Yeah, there is Black Panther. Oh, they're playing Iron Heart and uh, Wong. Oh, sure. Usually, the last cards would be this. What I could get this, and so the last card would be Black Panther. And so just we can go Wong. Black Panther into Zola. Let's see, Iron Um, kind of like Wolf's Bane better for some, because you can combo all of them at once. They can play Wolf's Bane a lot better than they can play Black Panther. True. 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 Let's see. You also play Bast. It's uh, true. Or um, there's the destroy version. Yeah, I was wondering. With like Deadpool, um, Forge, and all that. But Deadpool, to me, gets countered by Mirage. Well, that's a good point. Um. I mean, oh, Bast is looking pretty strong. Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Nah, let's, let's try with Black Panther. What happens? Okay, so that would be one deck. Uh, duplicate. Perfect. What was another deck that we said was interesting to explore? Um, you had mentioned a Lockjaw, and I think not for long had mentioned a, a Ramp that he was having fun with. Uh, yeah, log Lockjaw probably works. Because you have, like, you can play Wave. And you can play uh, Evolve cards if you want. Like, if I was just to do this. Uh, is there anything else we'd want in this deck? Do we still need the high evil Hulk? Like, is it possible that we just? I really want Infinite in this deck against, like, because you play Loki, so you can't play Infinite because you played a card last turn. Then we can just have like, I don't know. Would Iceman annoy them? I mean, with Quinjet and Loki, um. I guess if we get it early enough to prevent them from the combo. I can imagine... Well, no, that's... That deck? Oh, wait, that's sure, the card we didn't include in the negative. We wanted Valkyrie for their... Uh... We wanted Valkyrie for their... Oh, right, right. Actually, Valkyrie on uh, with Zola is really fun. Just Valkyrie every single lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. But now what do we Zola? We Zola Iron Man? We Zola Kno? We Zola No? That's enough, right? Also, Ironheart Wands is probably fine to Zola as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have one deck. Is that a second deck? 
I mean, they can Loki early on. Like, if they Loki on what? Turn 4? Then they can play a 5 into a 6? Yeah, and that really out-tempos a lot of the wave lines. But, I mean, the Thor, Jubilee, Lockjaw are pretty non-symmetrical against the Loki. Because we're always going to pull better stuff. Okay. Was there another one that we wanted to cover? Maybe two are enough. But let's see if these two are doing it. Uh, Honestly, Jane Foster is seeming pretty fun against um, Loki right now. Um, why? I mean, so you if you don't have um, zeros to pull, then it's just, you know, I guess a 4-8, which is for them. Um, okay. strong, yeah. but you know, not as useful as what we can do with it. Yeah, I mean, as long as we go Mister Negative, that's a lot of cards that can be used. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, not for long. Which deck gives you the most? Because uh, you you haven't played yet. So which one do you want to pilot? Um, I guess let's. Uh, we'll do the Lockjaw deck. Try that. Do you want the code or do you just copy it? Um, yeah, if you want to send the code, that would be, or put the code in the chat. I'll send it to you through a private message. Actually, there was a deck. It was a very long time ago while well, you, you make this one. There was an Ella with Sandman in it. That could be a way to do it. Oh, I don't know if that deck still exists. I think it should exist. Not in there. The the Nimrod Destroyer deck, like they can't play Destroyer. Mm -hmm. Nimrod's gonna be not that useful to them. Um, anything destroy, they potentially risk destroying their own collector or Angela or, um... That's what we're looking for. We're looking for cards that they would be like, damn it, I can't use it. It actually sounds pretty good because it also runs Shuri, which we've been discussing is kind of a, a semi-natural enemy by just going over. Yeah. I don't know if that's the deck, but that'll, that'll be our, our base, I guess. I really want X-23 in this deck. Well, it's, it's, I'm sorry, but Psylocke, if you're a destroy deck and you're rolling Psylocke, um, I think there's something wrong. <laughs> well, isn't X-23 just better Psylocke for a destroy deck? It gives energy, it's more power. Are we cool to try this? Yeah, that look. I mean, I this looks interesting. And you, no do you want to try this that. over the Lockjaw deck? Um, let's try the Destroyer deck. Yeah. I mean, we can try two. We have uh, like fifteen minutes left. At least I found a good name. <laughs> Uh, so you want the Destroyer one? Yeah, I mean, sounds interesting. Sure. And we, honestly, we could fit Wave in there if we wanted. Ooh. Easily. Yeah, well, Destroyer we might be the card I least want to see as the Loki. <laughs> well, we're I mean, trying to see, like, different ideas here like we already have wave here so we're trying to find different cards can't save it ah save it do you want to send that code one more time yep so the first one i sent you was the lockdown the second one i sent you was the oh. destroyer 
Great, thank you. You have them in private message, but we're not friends, so maybe you don't play. Like, you need to actually manually go to your messages. Yep, I got it. Uh, we're all right. set. Um, share my screen now. Oh, actually, there's a deck with an even better win rate, and it's playing Magic in this one. They're not playing X23, they're playing Magic. In... I don't know what's I, better, I mean... X23 or Magic. Because that's the only difference. It's like, the Psylocke deck that I showed previously didn't have Psylocke, they had Magic. And the win rate is much better. I mean, at least with Magic, they aren't... The Loki deck fills up their board that they probably don't want to see it turn 7. Well, the thing that scares me with Magic is you can turn off Limbo with Snowguard, right? Mm, yeah, that's a problem. If you arc the Limbo on 6, the game's over, right? Yeah, would it have to be turn 6? I trying to think of all the text and how that works. Eh, it might be too complicated. All right. Well, let's let's try it this way and we'll see. We'll see, we'll <laughs> see. All right. Share your screen whenever and let's go. All right. Oh, right. Um, do you want to do conquest or ladder? Uh, let, let's do ladder. We're, we're very likely to face Loki anyway. Okay. Is that, that's the goal. Like Before, we wanted to face a little bit of anything, and we faced Loki, so let's hope we face Loki this time. Uh, this is probably a bot. Um, okay. Turn two. So I'm trying to remember how this deck works. Do we put Wolverine outside the Shuri lane or inside the Shuri lane? Do we want Wolverine inside or outside the Shuri lane? Yes, I'm trying to. Doesn't matter. Mm, yeah, I don't think it matters. Okay. Um, I guess. Dark Tower, because ideally that's where we should. Uh, I would Wolverine Eternity range, probably because I'm just gonna Venom it next turn. Like if it's if it's a Loki deck, I want to give them a rock. Okay. We said they have a problem with space. Sense. There's a location that gives them space. All right. Well, it's a Loki deck. It's a Loki deck. Surprise! Um, surprise. That dream dimension isn't going to make it. X23. I mean, you could wait. You could go X23 into Iron Lad into Venom on 5. Yeah, because we can't... Um, yeah, we can't do the normal plan. It seems it might end up being a bit better. Dream do you think they might really drop an armor there? Oh, it's also a good call. Um, I guess we'll give it the plus two. I would go all in on Inter in your range. Because like, you're not going to destroy Stork Tower. For now, you only have one destroy, so... And remember, you're going to destroy on turn five, so there's a shot your cards just go into Stork Tower anyway. Okay, yeah, we wouldn't want to put anything there. Like, I really want to give them the armor? more than anything. Oh, no, okay. And that would be a rock. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that... Mm. Does that really change our math? No, because plus one power next turn means we have six, but our Zola and Destroyer are still going to cost seven. If that meant we could have Destroyer next turn, I would have Deathlocked. Yes. But... Uh, nah, my goal right now is Iron Lad Hyrule's Nimrod. See how we do. 
Okay, that's Loki. Okay. It's not so bad. Um, A good Venom. Yep, and then probably Zola Venom. Probably. There are no counter cards in our own deck, right? No, it's just power. I, I guess the closest is Iron Lad can technically pull counter cards from their deck. Yeah, okay. Well, that's far fetched, but yes. Quinjet. Oh my god, they're gonna get the nuts turn. Uh, well, they only have four cards. Really? Nothing, nothing went on Stork Tower? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it sounds rough. about the luck. Um, oh, and X23 went back to... Are we 50-50-ing? Well, for one cube, yes. All right. Um, I think I want the one point extra in the middle. Not that it will really matter, but I think I wanted the one point on the right. But all right, fifty-fifty for the win. Oh my god, ah. this deck counters so much. No, I'm kidding. But... <laughs> Best counter. I mean, that's pleasing. Easy counter. Uh -huh. Actually, it's frustrating because now I want to send them a message. Hey, what did you get? Why did you just play Chavez? Like, what was your hand that you had minus two on all the cards you took from us and you decided to play a six cost Chavez? It was probably something like Deathlock, Destroyer, Wolverine, Carnage, things that are not going to help them, right? It had to be something like that. That's, that's exactly what we're looking for. Like, <laughs> that's right. Literally, that, that's the situation we want. The situation we want them to, like, low-key and just look at the hand and be like, fuck. <laughs> I, guess, I guess we did it. Hi, guys. Hello. I, I totally forgot. <laughs> that's okay. This, this is why we have VOD. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll spend a nice 10 minutes together. It's all good. <laughs> So right now, we're exploring decks that would counter Loki. So we spend the first hour, hour and a half, exploring Loki. We discuss the best way we would build it, looking at the meta and everything. We tried it. And uh, now we discussed a little bit decks that would be interesting to use against Loki. And we're trying one that everyone felt like that seemed like a good idea. Cool. And it's a big Destroyer Nimrod deck, where the idea is when they Loki, they just get a bunch of Destroy cards and they're like... I can't play anything because I kill my stuff. Yeah, makes sense. So far, we know we're successful if they play Chavez on six. Yep. <laughs> so far, we're one on one on the idea. Hundred percent idea. Yeah. Hey, let's, let's, let's make the thumbnail. Um, collector. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm back. Oh. I'm feeling like this is Bounce from the Bats. Probably. It's probably Bounce with the Loki in it. Uh... Wait, what, what's our plan here? What? What are we doing next? So are we going I'm X23 going... Venom? Are we going Shuri? I was going to go Rock Slide, Shuri, Iron Lad. Okay, where is the Shuri going to go? On the right? Um... Yeah, I think okay. the Shuri on the right. Then Rock Slide the left. You have a plan to win the right, and they just played their best card in the middle. Get points on the left. Yeah, okay. 
Is is Bounce running any tech right now? Mm. In the past, right. it was running Spider Ham. Uh, what can it run? Shang Chi. But that's the tech that we're supposed to beat. Uh, I guess it's just Lad. Or oh, you can X, yeah. X twenty three. Um. Do you, how much do, do you want the do you want the X twenty three there so you or would that interrupt the Arnim Zola? Well Shuri is already interrupting Arnim Zola. Oh well, yeah. I, yeah. Like I the way I look venom, at it yeah. to me, yeah. our goal is that we're gonna venom the right. Like right now what I'm trying to do is high roll iron lad. So I would X twenty three there because we're gonna venom the right anyway, so Okay. Yes. And maybe draw another Oh, you're, gonna draw, Chavez, like, you're gonna draw Chavez. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, I should have Wolverine them in the shirt. Unless we. Okay. I guess they're gonna Chavez as well. Alright. Nimrod. Let's go. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh so goodness. We just found him. And. I mean, we want the two power anyways. Might as well. Uh, or middle. I think middle. Because your Nimrod is a 12. So you're already winning every lane. Like, if they Chavez, you beat them. 100%. Let's hope they Chavez. Yep. This deck is so good against Chavez on 6, man. This is exactly what we wanted to beat. Chavez on 6. <laughs> this is beautiful. No venom. Right? Huh. Oh. Alright, so they just have to play the worst card in their deck on the last turn every turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a Loki deck. Well, it's it's okay. weird because, like, you're not in a very different rank than uh, Silvermint. And we're facing kind of different decks. Oh, wait, we faced a... Uh, yeah, Loki was the first deck. Right, one second. Let's let's go yeah. three games. Bishop, can you share your screen? Like, do you want to play after this? Because we have other decks to te to test. We can give you one if you want. No, let's um, go, let's go three games. Let's go three games. I I've been playing. I'm down at like I just started playing a lot of this uh, yesterday. I'm at, I'm about to break eighty. I've been playing my Surfer Control deck from last season because it's just it's been doing really well. Okay. Um. But why did you stop? So uh, not for long. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were switching to Silverman. No, I no, no. I said, go back. We're playing three three games every time, so we oh. only play two. Yeah. Misunderstood. I'll go back. No problem. No problem. I think the correct answer is to say you stop streaming because not for long is the name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we keep it brief. That's for sure. I need to change activity every seven minutes, otherwise my nickname just disappears. <laughs> Since it's given to someone else like there are very strict rules I am not allowed to do anything for more than 7 minutes then it's considered like not for very long and I like it yes. honestly the potential of this deck is fantastic yeah the, the problem with this deck is just that everyone's running armor but right now apparently it's not ooh well, I think the or Loki mirror Armor is less useful. Um, we're skipping X23, right? Unless to... you're confident you're going to top that Carnage, and then you would yeah. slam X23 on the left, I think it's okay to skip. Even then, that doesn't really get us... Well, I guess it could maybe get us into a 4. We also haven't top decked yet. Um, oh, I guess we're going to skip. <laughs> I guess we're going to skip. Oh. Okay. Um. Oh, now X twenty three might be a liability if he goes there. 
Because we're not playing Killmonger. Yes. I just did, so. Maybe Nova middle? That seems like... Yes. Because we're not fitting in the curve anywhere else any other time. So. I mean, you could play X-23 if your only destroy is destroyer, and you just slam destroyer on the right, but it's not even... Yeah, no, I think we have to wait. But one thing we could do is next turn go X-23 Venom, and then we say that if X-23 goes to the right, we just destroy her and try again. Okay, that is... Well, we could death lock now, but... Maybe we keep the original plan of just rod into Venom death lock. Well, that doesn't work because the space throne. We would just want to go just maybe destroy her. Then maybe just go X-23 Deathlock. And On the left? Case, yeah, worst case, you just destroy an extra. Okay, you get him. It's okay, like both are fine. Oh, I totally didn't realize what I just played. Um, oops, that's a war thing, I guess. Venom is bigger, and we're not sure we'll have time to play the other ones. So. Oh, and that even worked. Um, so you don't have priority. So if they want to profex you, you can't do anything about it. Yeah, so... Um, do we just... I mean, our best line is like Armin, Armin Venom. Maybe. And that would allow us to Shuri Deathlock. Is it that good to Shuri Deathlock? I mean, do we have other options? What are they? Um, Destroyer? A destroyer is a game you... just kills Venom. Are they going to Professor X something right now? I mean, yeah, they've got you, Daredevil, you, Warpath. You, you can't do anything about it. Because if you play into Warpath, they just profit Space Throne, and if you play into Space Throne, they just Professor X Warpath. But you can't block a Professor X from them. But this is why I no. wasn't sure about the Zola play, because if they Professor X, your Zola is just move Venom out of the way. Yeah, well, I guess Destroyer would kill Venom anyways. Nimrod doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, oh that's oh. Pop Goblin. Oh. That's really good. On the other side? That would have yeah, been so can... good if he went into Space Drone. We can sure he deathlock that. Yeah, but the thing is, if we Zola up Goblin, we just give it back. That was so good. Yeah, he would have gone back over there. I think they're a bot. Do we want to turn six snap? Because at this point, what is there to lose? It's... Your cubes, your decision. <laughs> like, before, like, we, we didn't get the nuts on the deck yet, so it's hard to know, but yeah. I'll try it, and that clears and wins this lane. And so... Yeah, you go, to, you go from minus 6 to plus 10. It's not that bad. No. Okay. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right, well, that was a deck. It had cards. That I was something. It, May have won the Loki game for us. It's kind of hard to tell if they didn't play anything, but they did play Chavez, yeah. which is it's terrible. It's hard to know because yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't the impressive Loki deck. They didn't do that much this game. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they withdrew, so for all I know, they were going to play Chavez. Yeah, maybe it's just a Chavez night. That's right. Uh, <laughs> all right, so... Uh, well, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll play the Mr. Negative decks. Okay. Sounds, I would love to. Like... Playing again. I just don't know what the, I didn't see what you guys were doing. So, but so that's all right. It's all right. I'll take the lead on Mr. Negative. That sounds like fun. Well, you guys are doing. Looks like you guys are getting up there. I. I just don't have any time. <laughs> I played for like an hour and a half, two hours yesterday. 
So, and a little bit today. But I usually play Infinite right about on Saturday or Sunday before the new card drops. So. Oh, you still have time. Um, yeah, no, I, I, that's my goal. Uh... Has anybody been noticing that your the last deck you used hasn't been sticking around as much? Like my decks can be automatically reset to some random deck when I leave the game and come back. I haven't paid much attention. Hmm. Like I, I messed up my deck yeah. so many times in Conquest that now I check all the time. Yeah, I've I've noticed the same thing. It always defaults the deck I built like two months ago for some reason. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's not just me. I've been noticing that, but ah, war against the right deck. We're not drawing cards. Oh wait, we can Polaris Squinjet. That's fun. If we're not doing negative, that's going to be a problem. And I guess it's a really bad deck to play into Triskelion, because whenever they fill your hand, they reduce a draw from you. And we really want to mm -hmm. draw with this deck. Yeah, Triskelion is the reason I went from 95 to 90 right before the video. <laughs> Yeah, it's risky. Yeah. Oh, and feature location in general. Oh, I guess I'll take one of their cards and put it there. That's bad power. No, my surfer deck has been playing really well into Trisky in the end. It's been doing really well. Yeah, it's just, I, I guess the, the thing is more like it's just annoying to play into featured location. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it's, I mean, it's a control deck and I have to, I just kind of sit back and wait anyway. So, oh. you know. Uh -huh. That card is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we gotta try it. Oh, I could have played Deadpool too. I don't know why, but I could. And I mean, Baxter building, I'm pretty sure I win it if I play Iron Man and Mystique there. Like, Collector is big, but it's not Iron Man four times big. Oh... Oh, that's oh, gonna okay. be fun. Oh, let's play. Let's play. You have my negative deck, and oh, well, you have my normal deck, and I have my negative one. Let's oh, that's nice. Let's yeah. see what happens. Oh, I love that the low key and negative dropped on the same turn. That's gonna be bitter. Give me a big card. Just give me a Zola. Oh, all right. Oh. Oh, they got lucky. Oh, maybe not. I actually want the collectors to stay here. Yeah. That's yeah, that's right. Ah, oh, come on, game. <laughs> You're killing me. Is this running Lady Thor? We do. Wait, how do we win? I can see how we win the right. But... Um, we didn't discard. We got they can Wong nothing. help like, us? Well, they can play Chavez. Wong and Ironheart, maybe? Yeah, that's what I'm debating. You can get Deadpool out there too, right? But maybe we do this. We can do this, and then this, and this. We try to win this. Well, what are, they're more likely they're not going to build on the left, right? So if we do wrong, iron hurt on the left. I can't hear you so well. Oh, sorry, wrong iron hurt on the left. Um, here? Yeah, because they're not going to try to play for that. We have a better shot. What, what is the better shot? We're playing four power, and it's a minus six. No, no, no. You're right. You're right. Wait a. And they could play left. What? Scandalous. Wait, they can play both? Oh, oh both cost three? So much. 
Mm. Actually, if we win the right, if we won the right, we would have won because it would have been tied here. Okay, we should have just played to the right and we would have won. Okay, so I just reflex snapped when I got negative and we got Jane Foster, which was really bad. But actually, we got like I could have negative on turn three if it wasn't for the freaking Triskelion. Because we top decked it on four, but that means we would have drawn it on three and we had Zabu. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it might be that this deck works in about four hours. Maybe. Well, we're just testing <laughs> here. Like, I really, honestly, I really don't care about wins and losses. Like, the second deck, the oh, one yeah, yeah. not for long played, did really well. I think the one you played, Silvermint, like, the, the lucky we did, we actually should have won all our games if we played correctly. Mm -hmm. Now we'll see with the negative. I think that summed up my playstyle pretty perfectly. <laughs> it's a great place though. <laughs> That's right. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right. And I guess I want a magic. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm what do I want a magic? I want to magic this cuz I want to decide where my Mr. Negative goes. This so they run in the bounce, do they think they're running like move too? I don't know. No, it's not, not bound. There, there's Quinja. It's a Loki deck. It's a Loki deck. I have Valkyrie, so I wanted to wait until they play Collector or something, but I guess I'm just going to negative. Oh, really? I have Nolan Zola again? Come on. We're getting negative on four, and we're just drawing reverse? <sighs> That's the, the curse with this deck. I know the idea is good, but maybe the deck isn't. Maybe Knoll isn't good in the deck anyway. Like, what are we destroying anyway? Just all of Okay, we, we have to assume they're going to cancel the game on turn... Uh, on turn 6. Psylocke, really. Thank oh, you, Psylocke, oh, oh. for being here. Uh. Um, Iron Heart to Zola? I don't know. We're not going to get a lot of points that way, but. Is that mm. I mean, Valkyrie, um, Zola. Four cards. Wait, what are the four cards? Zebu is terrible. Iron Heart is okay. Um, Wong is okay. Mystique is really good. Uh, what's the last card? And Jane Foster. Okay, there's two good, two bad. And too bad. Maybe we do this. So I can Valkyrie middle. Okay, you can you can win, right? That's okay. That's the one that triggers it, right? Yeah. We don't care. We we're not gonna try and win this, so that's fine. Of course, we draw. Yeah. Okay, the, the, this <laughs> deck is really <laughs> annoying. So, are we gonna get it? Are we gonna get a turn seven? Do we think? I don't think so. No. Um, if we, no, that wouldn't help. Um, Literally nothing to do. Okay, so let's get oh. Null out the way. Let... Null just doesn't work in the to be honest. Like, we don't destroy anything. Null only works if we get a lot of... Like, if we get it negative. We play Morph? No, Morph is bad. I guess we could play Dark I... Okay. 
What else could? Kang. I don't even know if we want Jane Foster to. Maybe we want Crystal and that kind of. Stuff. Like maybe we just want to make a reliable deck. With combos. So this, and then just Black Panther. Something like that. Is that better? And then our goal is just to Wong, Black Panther, or something like that. We can win a lane with Valkyrie. We can win a lane with Iron Man. And otherwise, we just have the combo. If the idea is to um, frustrate Loki, is giving them a Wong. Oh, we already have Wong before. We give them a Wong Fair. against a 3-2. We're supposed to have a 2-4. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see if this way works. That was really yeah, I was hyped just about of... Mister Negative. It makes a lot of sense, and then it just because the Jane Foster one is just too specific. Like, yeah. it, I feel like it just loses to itself too much. We need to make it more reliable. The crystal makes it more reliable. What else? What else? What else? Being a bot makes it more reliable because you always get the Zabu negative combo. Really? I mean, I can try to see if I could talk with a robot voice. <laughs> I don't mind. What cards are good? Because there are other decks that we could play that are like super synergistic. We could play like Phoenix or stuff like that, that if they don't get exactly everything. Oh, I'll take Bast. Mm -hmm. Nice. We could have played Bast in the deck, actually. I'll very much take Bast. Oh, come on. Let me draw a card. Wait, they're playing... <laughs> what? It's, <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's a lockjaw. I can't believe it. It's a lockjaw. I'll just put... <laughs> Don't troll me. What? What are you playing? Are, I, uh, just kidding, right? I need mm. answers. Are they trying to lockjaw all their swarms and then get them all back with? Fu I I don't understand. <laughs> no, I mean, no, there was a lockjaw to feed. You fed the swarms too, right? Yeah. I lock. What do we do this, this is... turn? Do we even play this? Magic? Turn? No, I don't want seven turns. I'm already locked here. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go Psylocke into Black Panther. Magic? Damn it. Oh, they got it from Triskelion. Of course. I wanna leave oh, this yeah. open for Wong. I think I'm just gonna pass. There's seven turns, we don't have space. Hmm. So. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pass and hope for Wong. Ruby Lee. Okay. I have no idea what I'm facing. Okay, I know what I'm facing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure if Correct. Not, they leave, but. I don't know. If I see somebody play Psylocke and then skip a turn, um. Modok? You don't have Ella anymore. The hell are you doing? Who are you? <laughs> Still gonna Zola, right? You want one Zola now? Well, it's just gonna go to one location. I just wonder if it does you have a better shot if you miss the that that you don't miss the um well I guess the, I, I don't the, wait so the odds is fifty fifty to do two two shots right. for actually, three cards actually I just do this. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at seventeen and I win this lane yeah. 
I guess numerically it's better if you won Zora to actually hit the um, panther. Because your odds go from 50-50 to 66% to hit the panther. Because you get two shots on three cards. Yeah, but it doesn't change anything. It's just moving points. Well, you, you double the... You double the... Um, panther, right? But at least I, now you're I not doing the, the panther. panther. If I get Wong first, but then I play two bad turns. If I played Zola on turn 6, my turn 7 was open to actually do something else. Gotcha. Like, my goal wasn't to do some crazy turn and bet all my game plan on Panther. My goal was just, let's do something. Mm -hmm. Alright, let, let's have a final one and then we can call it a day. I think we found that this deck does really well against the completely random um, yes. deck. Against the worst deck, it does really well. <laughs> I mean, that could have been a Silvermint homebrew. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I actually play Wolvesbane. Maybe we actually need stuff that... I don't know. Okay, they accepted the snap. You have Mr. Negative. Psylocke, all right. Okay. Okay, the left... What am I going to Valkyrie? I'll Valkyrie the left. Let's go for Valkyrie left. Hello, Zabu. What are you doing here? You're, you're not the season pass card that everybody wants anymore. Get a lead. <laughs> and why are we getting freaking squirrels all the time, by the way? Like, just, just asking for a friend that's really annoyed that he can't do his combo in peace. <laughs> I'll do this. Morph? Serious? You took the only oh. good card? What a shame. Hmm. Oh. Wait. I'm gonna do this. Yeah. And on turn six, I'm just gonna Iron Man Mystic Middle. <laughs> Should have Crystal, maybe. Oh. Yep. Whoop. Oh, wait. Let's go here. Wait, what's on the right again? So Wong, um, Panther. So I get plus um, six, but I lose three wherever I want it. I think I'll go here. Yeah, because we're going to be fine on the right, probably, so... What? Oh. Why was there a Zola in this deck? <laughs> I think I'm still going to win, but it's funny. Because he gets a 16. Okay, I'm going to get a 32. No, I'm going to get a 16. Wait, I'm going to get punished? Yeah, I'm going to lose. Pretty sure I'm gonna lose. Oh. Wait, it was a mirror match? And he stayed? Are you... I wanna oh. die. I wanna die. <laughs> I really wanted... I lost a mirror match where I negative then they didn't? Oh, and, they, and they of course couldn't get the freaking squirrel. So I feel wait. How did they get the Panther? Are we playing the same one? They, they stole they, mine, right? They, they missed it. Okay, so the amount of things that had to go wrong in this game for me to lose it is outstanding. <laughs> they got morphed, the only good card in my hand. Then a 50-50 squirrel to Panther. Okay. Uh, I should have Crystal, I would have got more cards. He's going to... We're going to have to look for his uh, thumbnail in his video about... You'll never believe all the things that went right here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I feel like every coaching is a testimony uh, of how few control we have on this game. <laughs> Hey, I see this as a win. It showed that there's something really powerful with uh, Panther Zola right now, and so we had a good design. Yeah, Panther Zola is doing something. Yeah. yeah especially for the other players. Let's change this. Oh. That's a really good location for them. Hmm. I have crystals. Exactly right. Okay. Shuri, what, what are you doing here? Oh, it comes from Wait, Shuri? No? Shuri yeah, in the middle? What if they... Well, they just want to get something huge and... Oh... Here, have my negative. 
Okay, let's snap. All right, this is the okay. game we do it. This is the game we're gonna win. That's right. Okay, okay, we can do this. I don't know what you're gonna shuri, but I'm gonna draw Wong at some point, and my Panther is gonna be much bigger than whatever you got in the middle. That's really bad. Sure, a lot of people do that. That's Zabu. So, I can crystal here. Shuri's gonna die. I kind of want the points. Huh. No, I want I mean, a free we... lane for the Zola Wong combo. Because I can do everything on turn 7. So, uh, go ahead. No, I was going to wonder if like, there's some room here for arrow or something like that. If you want a free lane and you know you drag them over to your winning lane. Yeah, but I want a crystal. But... I want to draw my cards. If I want to get my combo, I need to draw into it. But then I need two space. Crystal and Zabu? Or no? Yeah, that's what I want to do. But oh, I'm not okay. sure. I don't think I need Zabu. I don't think I need Zabu. Wong will be a one. He does nothing. Okay, we got Zola. Bye bye, Quinjet. So that person is doing absolutely nonsense shit. Hmm. That's great. That's perfect for me. Yeah, I knew I should have played it for some reason because I didn't draw into this turn. Now it's the last turn of the game. Can't count. Oh my god, I'm playing so bad. Oh no, it's because they removed. Okay, it's because they removed. Yeah, they yeah. Removed yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I still have seven Tuma cards. Zola. It's Panther Zola in the middle. Isn't it? Zola, right? Yeah, and then everything dies. This one is gonna die. Let's think. You can even know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, they can't put anything higher than 16 on the left and the right. It's not it's just not gonna be. Eight. Well, if you well, Zola yeah, it as well. Yeah. You Zola it as well. Oh, yeah, you Zola it. You Panther well. Zola. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 16 on both sides. So that's just like a. Okay. Okay. Alright, we won 8 cubes, finally? Yeah, for sure. Okay, I'm gonna go to sleep super happy. <laughs> I played terribly today, guys, I'm sorry. Th thanks for having my back and actually doing the math, because that was embarrassing. I, I started, I started <laughs> giving class again to kids, and uh, I think it drained my brain much more than I thought. <laughs> but Well, but, you're also playing at like 1am, right? Yes, it's 1.28. Yeah, there you go. But let's end on this very positive note. Mr. Negative took eight cubes from a Loki deck. There you go. Can we please appreciate this moment? And that, <laughs> that will be my only win while everyone else won their games because you're all so much better. And that's the goal of these <laughs> sessions, that you are all so much better. So I, I did my job as a coach. I lost and you all won. <laughs> We're cool. <laughs> And that's the, and that and that spin is excellent, right? I win no matter what happens. I like it. Exactly. That's right. It's not I win no matter what happens. Is we're not that's here right. for me to win. We're here for you to win. So I'll right. take the loss. It's okay. That's right. <laughs> take take. All right. So I was gonna say take one for the team, but I feel like I took at least three or four. So. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. I'll try to get back and watch this stuff when I get a chance. Are, are, are there any questions or anything? Because I definitely feel like the negative deck is not over. I like the Valkyrie, no, although cool. she did literally nothing, but I really like the card. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something here. Yeah, I, I agree there's something with this deck. I think my only question is, once the featured location Triskelion fades, um, how often do you think we're going to see Loki? Like, It's hard to say, because... I. I think it's gonna feel a little much worse. Not a lot. I mean, I think the deck is really good without Triskelion. Like, I don't, I don't have a doubt about it. But we have to take into account how much hype you received today, and so mm -hmm. how much people are gonna think it's absolutely incredible when 
I, I think, like, right now, I think it's safe to say it's at least top five, very likely top three. But from every data I've seen, for example, Shuri has done better. And I also think that a lot of people are just running low-key lists where they just do their stuff. Like, we haven't seen many disruptive lists. We haven't seen many counters emerge. So maybe that's going to come. This is why, like, I'm not against, but I think it's too early to say let's nerf the card is because it's very new. It's very unusual. Like, it's something that changes our approach to the game that we have to play against different cards and stuff like that. So let, let's give people a chance to maybe adapt. I mean, after all, we did take eight cubes from it, so. I mean, our worst matchups today were when we played Loki, so. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I've, had, I've been using, like I said, a surfer deck that, you know, that I was with mostly just counters. Like, I have almost every counter in there. And Shadow King just, you know, it just it wins. You know, I just take out the collector. Shadow and... King is a really, really good card. Like, yeah. If, if, you, if you look at my screen right now, this is why we also played this version of negative and not the surfer one. Is because in this one we can fit Valkyrie, and Valkyrie is insane against these decks as well. Yeah. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. This new version got eight cubes. The yeah. previous one, the one with Jane Foster, is terrible. This one is plus eight, and I'm never gonna play it again, so it never moves. I'm gonna leave <laughs> it as a plus eight forever. <laughs> All right. Let me get your thumb down. Hundred percent win rate. Yep. So oh. once again, we've done uh, much more than two hours. I hope it's not too long on YouTube. And as usual, when we went to the gameplay, we just had a little fun. But I definitely think the the start of it, the discussion around Loki and everything, was a uh, was interesting. The counters will have to be like developed. Like we played what nine games of counters, six games. No, we only played. How many decks did we play? We played negative, we played the destroyer. Did we play anything else? Yeah, I think it was... Deck. Sorry, what? Uh, we played the Loki deck as well. Yeah, but it wasn't a counter. It was, we played Loki to test Loki. We put techs in it, but our goal wasn't to destroy the mirror match. Our goal was just to see if we could build the perfect Loki. But okay, yeah. I guess the starting yeah. point would probably be the Destroyer deck. I think Lockjaw is a good shot, probably also because it's much easier to play, and it's arguably a better deck than negative in the other matchups. Uh, would a Hallow deck work in that case too? What? A Hallow deck against Loki? I mean, if you're... We, we you're haven't, give a bunch we of haven't tried Ella, but yeah, Ella was amongst the cards where there's a condition... That even if you get the deck, if you haven't met the condition and you just Loki on four or five, it's probably going to be too late. Right. So, yeah, I, th I think Lockjaw and Ella are kind of the same, where the signature card cannot be abused by a Loki deck because they just don't have the conditions to abuse the card. Right. Uh, and I think, like, when I mentioned Ella in another Discord, someone told me. And I'll just address this because I think it's interesting to talk about it. Uh, someone told me, but if they Loki early on, like if they Loki you on three, they still have time to play your deck. Well, the thing is, they need to have the discards plus Ella, play the discards, not lose Ella. Because if Loki doesn't give them Ella, it's not like us, like they can draw it. And if Loki gives them Ella without the discards, it, it, it's a six power six cost card. Right. Have it. I, I'm going to give you a full hand on it. But yeah. but yeah, like I think definitely it's worth exploring Ella and this kind of stuff. Like uh, I'll probably keep exploring this. And for, for those that are following my Twitter account, I'll probably po post decks like tomorrow about like where I got about trying to counter Loki because a lot of people already talked about Loki. So I think we're, uh, we, we got to the end of it and I think the list we built was really good. So on this note, I think it's the end of the session. I'm really curious if any people want to comment or like join us on the on the Discord. Even if you're not a premium member, like you can just tag me or anyone from the from the session uh, in another like in the general channel or stuff like that. If there are points that you want to discuss, um, because these sessions like right after a new season and a balance patch and everything, 
it's really hard to to be right like i don't think anyone is right so the most important thing is like the discussing and like trying to think and trying to find because the more ideas we get to collect and the more chances we have at actually finding one that's gonna stick so it, it's really like quantity over quality when we're like kind of completely lost and the metagame is changing all right i'm gonna end the video thanks a lot for everyone uh that made it to the end and see you next time